Welcome back, you here at Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about the trad wife meme, the trad life dream. Many a young man right now is uh, obsessed with this aspirational concept of finding a chaste virginal woman, together populating the earth with many babies, and preferably saving the West as well. Uh, nothing wrong if this is your outlook, but it is important to have the perspective and realize, am I chasing something to keep up with an online political narrative which seems to be ever-changing, or is this what I genuinely desire for myself? There is not, to my knowledge, any commandment in the Bible that says you must marry a trad woman and save the West. In fact, I don't believe America is specifically mentioned under that name in the Bible. But what happens is guys, especially on Rushby Forum, which at one point was pro-Red Pill PUA, and now it's tradical Christianity, the younger dudes especially, I guess they follow Rush. Oh, I've got to get married and have kids, even though Rush himself is in his 40s, unmarried, and has no children. I suspect he will never get married because he's got a kind of quirky personality. Like he said, he wouldn't sleep in the same room as his wife because it would annoy him. Um, maybe he'll be a monk. I'm not saying everything he says is wrong by any means. You have to acknowledge, however, that sometimes you are going to lengths in trying to fulfill this political objective, and it may not play out in a manner that is actually ideal. So if you look at the demographics of Rush Forum, just from what I gather, overwhelmingly Caucasian, a certain number of Hispanics, and also Asians for the most part right? These dudes have some variation of an alt-right viewpoint, anti-mass immigration, anti-diversity, anti-feminism. While many of them desire a trad Caucasian woman, those are obviously a limited supply. So you'll see comments advocating, oh, you can go secure a post-Soviet lady in the Eastern Bloc, or go to Vietnam, go to the Philippines. And then they have these convoluted justifications for how their kid might be half Caucasian, but will also be slightly high IQ with the Asian side, even though not completely white. And, you know, at least it's sort of that. And you're saying, just do what's in your own interest, in your heart, what you want to achieve, not the political agenda. The political agenda doesn't care about you. It's not going to save you at the end of the day. In fact, it could make you screw up by using your family as essentially a political outlet which you see a lot of liberal parents doing uh, to great damaging effect. But when you consider, you're going to, yeah, I guess the Philippines has Western influence because of the Spaniards, but you're going to a very different culture to get a wife, to bring her back to the West, which in a way you are promoting diversity in the West, to resist the globalists. But now if you bring that woman to the West, she could become a feminist, Westernized, and then start cucking you. So... They say, stay in that country. So you're going to stay in the country, which adds diversity to that country, and then help them restore the nominally communist Vietnam or uh, the conservative Philippines. I don't really think the men there want you or need your help, to be perfectly honest. In fact, as much as these trad guys will complain about hypergamy and feminism, they are introducing or taking advantage of hypergamy in another country. Because when you show up in the Philippines and they see that you're white or let's say even an American black guy, you got the passport, you probably have more money than the average working class or lower middle class Filipino dude or Vietnamese dude. Now all of a sudden those guys are being disenfranchised because, oh sure, I'll go with a foreigner. Yeah, I want to get out of this place. Or even if you stay in the country, I'm going to be living a much better life. So you are contributing to hypergamy too. It's not like all these you know, third world countries, as we call them, have an unlimited supply of women just to help you save the West. You are also part of that problem, albeit in a different sphere. When you bring this up, they get really angry because they don't want to hear reality, but that's the truth. Uh, Korean men do the same thing. Korean men will go to Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos to get more subservient women because they feel like the Korean women are too feministic and materialistic. So, it's just a cycle. And I always tell people, if the Philippines had become a U.S. state, do you really think Filipino women would be interested in Matt Forney or in some average white dude just because he has a passport? No, because they would be able to get to the mainland easily. In fact, you can test this out. Go to Dominican Republic, 
where the women will just fling themselves at you on the dating apps and in person and go to Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, they're like, yo, what's up? Unless you are very good looking or a lot of money, Puerto Rican women don't care because they're not so desperate. They might not be high income, but they're not so desperate to where I've got to get out of this, uh, you know, third world place or my life is over. That's just something to think about. You know, it puts it into perspective. Realistically, I think there's two settings where I could see a trad relationship working in the current you know, state of things. One would be you move to some remote village in Pakistan or Afghanistan and just join them. Possibly that could work out. The other would be you take your wife to like rural Idaho and just have a subsistence-based existence or maybe you can trade stocks using your crappy HughesNet connection. Uh, but then what's going to occur more than likely is she'll be standing in the doorway and some patriot conservative American will blow her head off. Uh, excuse me, Martin? Martin? Uh, yeah, sorry, Susan. Yeah, yeah, that's unacceptable. You cannot mention that. It's going to be a strike. Oh, oh, my apologies. Disclaimer. I didn't mean to say that. It was wrong. But yeah, let's be real. Uh, you cannot expect a trad relationship to function in the suburbs or the city. There might be some exceptions. But realistically, it's not going to be viable for most men. And let's get into more of the details. Now, I should note something briefly. Some of the guys on this forum will make comments like, the answer to modernity is to find a traditional Christian woman, court and marry her within six months to a year, don't allow her to get the vaccine, and abstain from all premarital sex. That latter aspect could be one of the biggest mistakes you make as you're trying to erect your trad life. Let me explain why. In most cases, you will not know a woman's true personality and quirks until you become physically intimate, because sex is something she knows she has that's valuable, so she can try to lord that over you. You have to earn it. It's a special prize. And what happens is, if you sleep with her and you haven't already signed a marriage contract, she's going to get a little bit paranoid because she knows, oh, he could just sleep with me and leave. He's not exactly tied down. So a good woman at this point will start showing you even more love, dedication, like I want you to definitely be my husband. Unfortunately, many chicks, they take a different route. They become extremely paranoid. They will try like, I'm going to break up with him to make him really chase me more and commit. Or I'm going to go out with someone else so he's jealous. They'll do some of the most negative and destructive things. And you need to see that before you actually commit and marry them because otherwise it can create significant problems in the relationship. This brings us to a potential problem in your married life. So maybe you homeschool the kids. She's pretty well occupied. Or uh, you work at home so you're in close proximity. Uh, but perhaps the kids are a little older. They go to a private school. Now she's got a bunch of free time. She can go visit the personal trainer at the gym or the kickboxing class, or I guess back in the day it was the milkman. Uh, one of the most common areas where relationships fall apart is in the workplace. I'm not saying I'm against women having jobs or education, but the environment of the workplace as it exists is very dangerous for what you might consider to be a trad or conservative relationship. And that's because of a little character known as the simp snatcher. Now what the simp snatcher does, his sole purpose is to dig it, you know, pry, try to find the chink in the armor where you're imperfect. Now, a lot of dudes are going to be, I think I've mentioned it before, 85, 90, 95 percent Mr. Right. You got a good job, you're loving, you know, a good father, you treat your wife well, uh, you might even be, understand the female body enough to get her off, but you're not perfect because you're stressed out, you're busy with your job, with projects around the house, uh, doing things with the kids. So you're not always devoting yourself to be like a romantic guy with a rose in the mouth all the time. And this is where the simp snatcher comes in. He's looking for that 5, 10, 15% where you're not Mr. Perfect, where he can start uh, having essentially an in. So he'll be like, Wait. You mean he doesn't write you a romantic letter every single morning telling you how amazing and wonderful and special you are? No. And if you look at the justifications women give, they'll usually blame their husband. And they'll say like, well, this other guy, he made me feel sexy. 
or he made me, he was uh, my, the answer to my emotional needs, all that nonsense where they try to not take responsibility for their own actions. Um, it's a significant problem. Not necessarily that she always sleeps with the simp snatcher himself. It might be that he plants the seed, it erodes the relationship, then she starts going to look for Chatter Tyrone. But the point being, this is the issue in an environment and a society where, frankly, there's not really any consequences for that sort of behavior for men or women. And we'll get into that just a little bit. But first, let's advance to uh, the next uh, issue. At stake in this discussion is the whole concept of mate poaching versus mate guarding. I do want to say thank you to Red Pill Tokyo Mentor for recommending this book, which is excellent. I'm going to be citing it a lot in the Black Pill text that I'm putting together. But he talks about forms of, I guess you call it mate guarding. Mate guarding is when you are there with your woman making sure that other dudes buzz off, right? And that's easy enough to do if you're not a total pushover when you're with her. But of course, you've got a job you've got to commute, you've got other obligations. So traditionalism really, what it was meant to do is essentially push back on biological uh, realities which can be self-destructive. You can't really form a civilization. You can't uh, have a satisfied populace if so many guys are disenfranchised because women are always trading up. Uh, you can read the Tucker book, Marriage and Civilization, another great one that I'm going to be citing uh, quite copiously. In that whole realm of uh, mate guarding, you need some placeholders or some policies that can free up the guy so he doesn't have to be paranoid following his wife around all the time. One thing might be, you ever told a girl, um, oh, you're really beautiful without makeup. I've said this to a couple of girls, right, that I've dated. And I genuinely believe it. I mean, I don't like all that clown stuff on the face. I think they look much better natural. However, why are they putting the makeup on? Is it because of their man, or is it because they're trying to broadcast their availability and quality to other potential mates? You think of, you know, the, the darker tone girls will put this shine on their skin, especially. Uh, you'll see the girls doing the rosy cheeks, make their eyes look bigger, their lips look fatter. The tight clothes emphasize the bust, the ass. That's because they want to, sh look, look at me, look at me. Now you would think, if you are in an actual relationship, with a man, especially married, you don't need to do that. But yeah, well, maybe I can get something else. Even if there's something else comes in the form of a dude who's a loser, he might be the 10% guy as opposed to the 85%, but he will meet that one aspect. And that's what really matters. So some people believe this practice of a guy telling his girl, uh, you look better without makeup, is actually an evolutionary strategy. He's communicating, I don't want you to be as appealing to rival males with your face all made up or your tight clothes. And think of like uh, traditional religious orders. About a week or so ago, I was in this Hispanic family owned mini market and the girl at the register, the daughter, she's wearing a dress, but it's not tight fitted to the skin. It's the loose, bigger sleeves. She's got like a, a white t-shirt or something underneath, so no cleavage. Right, very conservative, almost desexualized image. She had nice long hair, whatever. But the whole point is, there's less stuff to look at. Whereas if you compare it to how a lot of Latinas or indeed other women dress, tight pants, showing the belly, tramp stamp, cleavage, that's more likely to cause a guy to go, oh yeah, I'm going to freaking try to hit on that. Or with Muslims, why do they put the ninja suit on women? Now the old joke is that Muslim men can't control themselves, but if you think about it practically, if you can't see the shape of her ass, her breasts, her eyes, her lips, there's very little that you can eroticize. So it delimits the likelihood that while the man is away working, he's going to get cucked because it's harder to seduce a woman you can't see. I'm not saying all Muslim women are devoted because we know that's not true if you listen to AML, but it is a guard against potential infidelity. And this is the fundamental problem with guys who want their trad life trad wife. They do not take into account how society and its influences and its lack of social controls are liable to create problems in their relationship. For your marriage to be successful, ideally you need a social support structure. I'm not suggesting every single woman is out there trying to cheat, but 
you still need to have safeguards in place. So let's go back to the simp snatcher. He continues making uh, advances on this woman. Well, older women and other men in the office would say, cut that out. She's taken, she's promised to someone or she's married. That's out of bounds. Uh, and it'll be like uh, Liz Warren. Nevertheless, he persimpted. All right, next up, men are going to take you outside to the woodshed and they're going to learn you a lesson as we say, well, you can't do that. Of course you can't do that. Not in modern consumer capitalist individualism, you know, free love. You can't do that. But if you really want to have a successful trad community, which would probably have to be on a smaller scale, it's not going to work with a central government that's going to legislate away your ability to self-police, but that would be one way to ensure as much of a, um, you know, moral and loyal society. You're not going to have that if you maintain this model where there's no brotherhood, there's no honor between men. They talk about repeal the 19th, take away women's rights, but that's not enough. You have to police male behavior too. You have to police the simp snatchers. And a lot of these guys who promote trad this, trad that, then they turn into little libertarians when it comes to men having to get in line as well. So that becomes a problem. If you want to have a successful, strong trad community, you're going to have to also put some limitations on your own desire to be, you know, maximum freedom, whatever I want. As I've said before, if you go and start trying to uh, run game in a Muslim country, you could end up beaten, in prison, maybe killed. That's because they don't want that disruption. Now, so you have to weigh, essentially. Do you want to be the, the liberal society or do you want to be more of the conservative model? I can speak to this directly because I've been in a number of situations where a woman was open signaling she was married, and I said no. But you have to have that mentality. As long as men maintain these narcissistic, zero-sum game, I'm just about myself and my you know short-term pleasure, financial gain, uh, social benefit, you're not going to have a healthy society. So yes, there is the individual part. There's the finding someone building a family, but there's also recognizing you're going to have to communicate or rather cooperate with people on a scale to say, let's maintain this. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to have the trad, you know, lifestyle. And then a bunch of dudes are going to end up getting cucked you're just going to you know, revert back to some very debased and unstable polygamist model. So I, you know, I get it. it is not, it's not exactly exciting, but I really want to emphasize, don't get married. Don't sign away your freedom because you believe I've got to save the West. I have to meet some political objective. If that comes along with it, fine. But make sure you're actually with a person who's worth their while and that your heart is in that, not the political narrative that everyone else is following.